Hi, welcome back to my series of screencasts on using QGIS. In this screencast, I'm going to show you um, some of the new capabilities that have been added um, in 1.7 that relate to labeling. Uh, in particular, I'm going to show you these new three icons that have been added, which allow you to um, edit the placement, rotation, and other properties of um, the label and have those edits stored persistently in the attribute table for your layer. So um, I've got just a simple roads layer here to demonstrate and I've already enabled labeling. And I just want to show you that um, uh, in the attribute table to prepare for this uh, screencast, I added four columns here. I've added uh, a font size column, a rotation column, and a label X and a label Y column. But basically they should be numeric fields. So what I'm going to do now, uh, one other thing I should mention is that I used the field calculator just to set these values um, for rotation and font size uh, to presets of 0 and 10. The reason for this is because when we data define our font size, um, if it's uh, uh, set to null, the labels won't show up because the font size will be nothing. So I set a preset font size of 10 for all my labels. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the labeling um, options here. And you can see at the moment I'm labeling on the street column uh, with the preset size of 8, which is, being, which is going to be overridden by the label size column. Um, and I'm going to look at this data defined settings column over here. So you can see in the data defined settings list a bunch of different fields, uh, properties that you can associate to a field in your attribute table. So, for example, for the size of the label, I've made that new column called font size, and I can associate the font size to the size property for the font. And it will then override this eight points that I've got set um, already with the value of the, um, in the attribute table for font size. Now, I can do the same for a bunch of different other properties, but I'm only going to be showing you these four today. So, um, the other three properties that I'll set are the label position, which is label X uh, for my table and label Y for my table. You'll see that once I've um, chosen these two, these three um, options below become enabled. I don't know if you saw. Let me just disable that again. When there's no label X and label Y, these are not available. So you need to have a label X and label Y before you can set these properties here. For the rotation, I'm going to use my rotation column. Okay, so I've said these four columns, uh, these four properties should be data defined from the matching columns in my attribute table. If I choose apply, you can see that my labels in the background change to 10 points because they're now obtaining their size from the, um, from the attribute table. Good, so that's great. And now um, my labels are showing just like normal. But when I start to edit the layer, you'll see that these three icons are now no longer um, grayed out or disabled and I can actually go and um, individually adjust the position for each label. So I, by enabling this tool I can shift the position around. So for example maybe this one I prefer to have it like that. And then I can also adjust the rotation by taking this, um, I just have to get it precisely, um, by taking the rotate tool and um, spinning the label around. And then I'm just going to shift it back over the road here like this. So whereas the adjacent labels have been auto-positioned using the um, positioning algorithm, this label is now positioned based on its data definition. And um, I can also use this third tool over here to go and um, click on the label and then explicitly type in the position um, for the um, label and its rotation. So maybe I wanted it rotated a little bit more like that. Go back the other way. And so on. So, so now I've um, specified the position um, and um, rotation. I can also um, adjust the font size um, over here, so I can make this particular street bigger than the others. 
and you'll see now that um, it's only sh this one is rendered in a bigger font because of the value in that column. So let's go and have a look. Let's save um, that and go and have a look what happened in the attribute table. So what I've done is I've just sorted by font size which will bring the one that I've edited up to the top. And you can see now that when I um, use the positioning tool it's assigned the position to the label X and Y columns. When I use the rotation tool it's assigned the rotation and when I've changed the font size it's changed the font size and font column. So using this um, technique you can interactively go and place each label in a specific position where you want um, them to be uh, prominently shown in a certain place and the other labels you can just leave um, and by default they will be auto positioned. I hope you've enjoyed watching the, the screencast and um, we'll see you next time.